Hello, uh, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Today's date, it is November 19th, 2016. I uh, just wanted to update you a little bit on what's going on. Um, I haven't got, well, I need to order a router in. I gave my router to my grandson when he moved out. Actually, he had bought the router, I believe, if I remember correctly. Uh... So I gave him the router, and of course I have a fancy router, uh, punch, uh, uh, I don't even want to go on that, can't get that all to work. So I mentioned this in another video, uh, I ordered in a uh, switch box, $10. Uh, hooked it up, you know, came out of the cable modem, <clears throat> hooked into it, nothing. So, I have a voice over IP box that I have two phone lines that come into it. And it's uh, the step up I had for years and years, their least expensive one, and then this was the next step up. I purchased that a while back for some reason. I guess I could have two phone lines going into it, and it, but it had a LAN built into it. So I, I came out of the cable modem, went into the voice over IP box LAN, come out of there and I go into the uh, switch, and then that works. Of course, I still don't have Wi-Fi. Wi but before I did that, I was getting, uh, with my regular setup that I had before Russell moved out, uh, we were paying for uh, 100 megs down and 5 megs up. Uh, we actually started getting about 130 down and 6 up. Uh, but then when I made this switch, because I had to make this switch, uh, because of the voice over IP LAN, uh, I'm getting 35 down. Still getting about five or six up. So I'll have some money. Uh, today is Saturday, the 19th. On the 23rd, I'll have some money, and so I will order in the LAN. And things hopefully will be taken care of then. Uh, new subject. Um, if you were watching one of my videos, I think the other day I mentioned about having problems with my new FZ300 camera on making on making videos with it. Uh, this camera is loaded the menu you can do unbelievable things and I've just scratched I didn't even, I haven't even scratched the surface of things to do because I'd have to look stuff up to do it or I'd have to be have a normal intelligence and be able to figure some of it out. So anyway I started making some videos and what in the heck's going on? Uh, they, there's a setting in here that you can use uh, snap video and if you go into the settings you can tell the camera when I press the record movie record button I want the video to be four seconds or I want the video to be 30 seconds or I want the video to be whatever you want somehow I'd gone in and set it to four seconds so I would press the record button to do a 30 minute video or something and after four seconds it would stop I should have known because when I then looked at, when I uh, put the videos and the pictures and everything I had taken into the computer from the camera, those videos were marked snap video and I just didn't, well, I didn't look. Uh, I'm still working on my grandson's, well, I'm going to call it my uh, 
YouTube studio. I'm over to, I drug a big old chair in there. I, uh, need to get, the, his closet needs to be cleaned out. He just left a ton of stuff in the closet, stuff he said he didn't want. But I know somebody who wants a lot of, a lot of her, uh, books on computer programming and the Chinese language and all kinds of stuff. So I need to get those up off the floor and stack them up. And then when he comes, hopefully he's, uh, Hillary and Russ are going to come over. Dar is making a turkey for Thanksgiving and Hillary said they would come. I hope they, I hope they do. We haven't seen them. You know, here, if there's anybody that's into communications, Back when I was in high school or whatever, I put out a monthly publication that went out around the world uh, for shortwave listeners. Back then, too, I did a uh, radio program that was broadcast over WRUL radio to Europe, Africa, and North America. That was during, that was right in the time when, because I was listening not to my program, but I was listening on shortwave to WRUL radio. And that's where I heard the announcement that John F. Kennedy had been assassinated in Dallas. So that whatever year that was, that's the year or so I did the DX program. Uh, and then, of course, I started a computer bulletin board system. Well, back then when I put out the magazine, I wrote several of the columns in the magazine. Uh, space communications column, uh, editorials, and stuff like that. I wrote, I can't remember exactly what it was about, but uh, a uh, gentleman in his publication or whatever called me a dirty garbage pail editorializer. Uh, a, a, I think he called, I believe he called me a denizen. A de the denizen of the uh, dirty garbage pail editorializer. So, so I printed up in the next issue of SWL that went out, I had a certificate in there certifying that everybody who was a subscriber uh, a lot was, was a denizen of the garbage pail editorializer or whatever. And then of course in 1982 I started doing a computer bulletin board system and when the World Wide Web was invented I moved it to the World Wide Web and I'm still doing a still doing Howard's Notebook and doing YouTube videos. So I've always been into communications and now I'm not so much into, you know, instant messaging and all that kind of stuff. But I mean, I have a Twitter feed and I have, we all do, don't we? Facebook page and all that garbage. But Hillary and Russell left here and I don't get any communications from, you know, from them. Uh, why don't I, you know, they could at least send a message saying, oh, today was a good day. Uh, we did such and such. I just don't hear from them. Now, Hillary does call uh, occasionally, Darlene. I'd like more communication, you know, more communications. Uh, see, where was I before I got sidetracked and rug off. Um, this is an interesting article, uh, the Washington Monthly, whatever that is. Who lost the most, who loses the most if Obamacare is repealed? And uh, I'll put the link below, but it talks about uh, most of the losers, 60% or something rather, are in states that voted for Trump if uh, Obamacare is uh, repealed, they're going to be the biggest, biggest losers. Uh, as many as tw 129 million people, or more than a third of Americans, have some type of pre-existing health condition. Uh, so those people, if it's uh, repealed, are going to be people who are go going to be hurting. Uh, of course, also, and pre-existing conditions. That's, you know, asthma, bronchitis, uh, 
all kind, you know, all kinds of conditions. And if you have those, you know, an insurer, they won't insure you. Or, well, they just won't insure you. Or they would, yeah, we'll insure you, but uh, it'll be, you know, $5,000 a month or something, you know. So, you know, Obamacare fixed that. And it looks like Trump and the Republicans may, you know, do away with that. Um, also covered people who changed, you know, Obamacare, people who changed jobs. Yeah, I went through that uh, when I, that's been when I retired, because I didn't immediately uh, qualify for uh, Medicare, because I wasn't old enough. And uh, so, what do they call that, that they, uh, there's a thing that covers you for a while that you can pay if you had insurance with the company that you worked for. And the monthly rates for that were more than my retirement from the company to have medical insurance. Uh, and I didn't have a pre-existing condition. I didn't have any conditions then, except stupidity. Uh, thank God that doesn't it's not a pre-existing condition, is it? Uh, anyway, you you should read this article. It's, uh, there's more in in in. Uh, as you know, too, I've mentioned many times. You probably uh, don't want to hear it that I worked hospital security for thirty years, and you know, actually, before I was working hospital security, because Hillary was little. Oh, yeah, that was a long time ago. I know it sounds stupid, but she got off a curtain rod. She got a metal ring stuck on her finger, and I couldn't get it off. Now, of course, later when I worked hospital security for 30 years and spent most of that time probably in the emergency room, and when I became, well, I don't think in my, it's my EMT training when I got certified as an EMT. I don't think they covered taking rings off of people's fingers or objects off their fingers, but working in the ER, I saw how they did it and I could have, but anyway, I took her to the emergency room. And when I took her to the emergency room, and it was, by the way, a hospital that later I went to work for, Research Medical Center. So this would be pre-1970. Took her to the emergency room, went in, packed, and went up and uh, there was a big sign there and it was there for, uh, for years. This is not a free hospital. You will be expected to pay right now. Now, of course, I had insurance and of course uh, I was able to pay. But, you know, that was the situation, you know, years ago and uh, later, they would, they would never put a sign up like that, but, and of course Republicans say, well, nobody is, you know, nobody is denied, that's what they've been saying, you know, nobody is denied health care. You just go to the emergency room and you'll get taken care of. No, 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 no. I spent 30 years and a good part of that time in the emergency room. Now, sure, if you come in, well, later, when some federal regulations were passed, that hospitals were not supposed to turn you away, not supposed to uh, send you to another hospital, say, you know, okay, well, we're not going to treat you, but just, you know, you're having a heart attack, but just drive over to this other, or even calling an ambulance and transporting, you know, dumping. Things like that came up, but uh, recently, uh, before the Affordable Health Care Act, but recently. If you go to the emergency room, yes, if you're having a heart attack, they'll take care of you. If you go to the emergency room and there is blood gushing out of you, they're going to stop the, you know, the bleeding. Yes. If you come in with a broken arm or leg, uh, yeah, they may, depending on how, what the break is, you know, they may splint it for you. 
and give you some a prescription for a few days for some pain medication and they will tell you to see an orthopedic doctor but an orthopedic doctor is if you don't have insurance the orthopedic doctor is not going to do anything for you now if it's a bad break you know a compound fracture and a bone is sticking out or something they'll take care of it in the emergency room then they'll you know uh, tell you to see a, a doctor and give you a referral to a doctor who expects to be paid you know uh, the big problem I saw well so many problems I saw if you have a kid with a fever or uh, problems like that you go to the emergency room uh, you know now or, you know when uh, Sure, they check. Okay, the kid's got a fever. Uh, uh, some Tylenol. You know, here's some, you know, take take these Tylenol, uh, and check with your physician. You know, for follow up. Now, some emergency rooms would say maybe for stitches or something. Okay, you can come. Some you know, you can come back here and the stitches will take them out. For, you know, no charge for that. Or, but. Uh, no, you don't get people who are have bad medical, you know, you're told to see, you go to the emergency room and they will stabilize it and then they refer you to a doctor and uh, the doctor, you know, I've got Medicare with 60 million other people have Medicare and some people, and then you people have, you know, Obamacare, and then people have Blue Cross Blue Shield, and and you work for some company, and you have insurance or or whatever, uh, and but that's another thing too, which really it sucks, and it's really wrong, and I don't see why it's not. I see it all the time. Okay, I have Medicare. And if I didn't have Medicare when I, I worked all my life, and I worked you, a lot of the years, I, I mean, I worked two jobs. Uh, I had insurance, and I had insurance on my wife, and then when we were divorced, my wife and kids, and then when we were divorced, I had ins I continued always to have insurance on my my kids. Uh, if you have insurance or whatever, or Medicare, you know, Medicare or whatever. Uh, let's say, I see this all the time for myself. I go and have um, blood work done or something. Well, let's say I go to the, go to the emergency room. Uh, I go to the emergency room for some reason. Uh, the hospital or the emergency room they say, okay, let, uh, this this procedure, let's say, you know, this costs five hundred dollars, but your insurance company uh, it is billed for five hundred dollars. But we have a deal with the insurance company, so the insurance company uh, only has to pay twenty five dollars. Okay, that's, I mean that's that's fine with me. You know, maybe it'll say that I have to pay two dollars or five dollars or something. Uh, if you do not have health insurance, you go to the hospital and you have the same, the same thing. What did I? Was it five hundred dollars? I said. You go to the hospital, and you do not have insurance. They say you owe five hundred dollars. They don't say, okay, everybody that has health insurance, their insurance company only gets billed for fifty dollars, but you're getting billed for five hundred dollars. That doesn't make any fucking sense. Uh, two, if you get a bill for five hundred dollars. You know, you don't have health insurance, and you get a bill for five hundred dollars. How are you going to come up with five hundred dollars? 
You know, I mean, it's just, it's, it's difficult. Now, some bills are more, you know, hundreds, thousands. Why does my insurance company just get billed $50? Why can't the they built why can't the hospital or the doctor's office or whatever bill these people say, hey, okay, fifty dollars is what it's gonna cost. Okay, I can come up, you know, if I'm a person working at McDonald's or something, fifty dollars is gonna hurt, but I can I can come up with fifty dollars. Maybe I can uh, not maybe you can't you know, you can send twenty five dollars to them and pay the other twenty five dollars the next time you got paid in two weeks or in four weeks or something like that. If you get a bill for $500 and you're working at McDonald's or someplace like that, where are you going to get it? And remember, it could be more. So crazy stuff going on. And uh, Republicans are not going to help. Now, is there are there things wrong with... Uh, Obamacare, yes. The first thing wrong with Obamacare was that Republicans totally boycotted it. The only way it passed, though, was Obama made some concessions in order to get, like, five votes from the Republicans. He needed five votes or seven or whatever it was. That's all they could get. And he made some concessions that made it worse, not as good as it should have been or could have been, just in order to get those five votes or seven votes. I forget if the five was in the House. I think it was in the House. Uh, so, so there were concessions made in order to get it. But then the thing was designed to work a certain way. It was designed that there would be a, forget what they call it, but on the federal level, if if people in their states didn't have the insurance exchange, the Obamacare insurance exchange on the state level, then the federal government section would take care of those states. So what happened is almost every, and I forget, we, I think two-thirds or three-fourths of the governors of the 50 states are Republicans. And I forget what the number was. Almost all of the Republican governors, see, the states were supposed to set up insurance exchanges. They would set it up. wasn't going to cost the states anything. The federal government would, you know, but then you'd have this pool of people on a state level working with a state exchange, and what happened is Florida might have changed its mind, the governor, because that seemed to me like it was. But Because one of the Republican governors went ahead and for his people kicked in you know, and said, yeah, I'm going to go with it. I forget what state it was. But all of the Republican governors said, fuck Obamacare. We hate Obamacare. We don't want him to, we don't want him to be successful. Uh, and so we're not setting up the state exchanges because they were going to do everything they could to make Obamacare a failure. So then people on the state level, instead of having their insurance exchange, and then too you have the insurance companies who always want a piece of the pie, uh, you know, if your health insurance, with the, the way things work, health insurance, all the health insurance companies should be non-profit. Sure, they could make a little bit of money for stockholders, or they sh they could pay their people who are talented and, and whatever executives and CEOs, pay them a decent, more than a decent, you know, salary. Uh, but it should be non-profit, but it's not. Oh, man, they rake in the money. And it's coming from taxpayers for uh, Medicare, uh, Medicaid, all this type of stuff. And of course, it's coming from insurance companies. It's coming from, well, of course, they get it back. But 
you know, what it what should happen, but the Republicans would never stand for it. It would never going to happen now with with Trump as uh, president elect and soon to be Trump is these insurance companies make tremendous amounts of money. So much like almost like a, what is a drug operation, isn't it? They take in so much money that they can't handle, you know. We're running out of room for the fucking money, you know. Uh, build some tr trenches out back and, you know, so we can put the, mo put the money in there. Like a Scrooge, like, like, what, like Scrooge the Duck with the, I love that cart comic book when I was a kid where he had the swimming pool filled with uh, gold and coins and dollars and he'd get out in the, He'd jump into his swimming pool with money that was filled with money or have a bulldozer plowing it or whatever. That's the way it is with these insurance companies. They're making the money off of sick people. They're making the money off of uh, all these these things. What about a excise profit tax? I'm not saying, and I'm not a communist, I'm not saying take over the insurance companies and hang the CEOs. You could even do it when they hit when you have the New York Stock Exchange rings the bell every day at the end of trading. You could put some gallows up there and hang those insurance companies. No, no, I'm sorry. I was fantasizing. Uh, put an excise profit tax. If you make, you know, allow a profit, of course. But if the company makes a tremendous profit, tax that. And that money goes to fund Obamacare or the health you know, system. Doesn't have to be Obamacare, it could be the health system or whatever. Excise profit tax. Excise profit tax on pharmaceutical companies for sure. There is no reason. Now, the medications I take, you know, they're, well, some of them are, I mean, $180 a month or something, which I don't, you know, my insurance pays for that. Uh, I pay 2 or $3, I think, for the prescription. But uh, there are medications that there's no way, that, well, even those, there's no reason. <laughs> What, there's not diamond dust in there. There's not, uh, you know, gold dust or whatever. No reason for those prescriptions to be that expensive. So on the pharmaceutical companies, put a tax. Because of, where are the pharmas? I bet you, where do the pharmaceutical companies, uh, where does their income come from? I bet you 80% of it, I bet you 80% comes from Medicare, Medicaid, and, you know, your insurance company. That's where the money is coming from. They're not, they're not out there selling lemonade or something like that. They're getting the money, and they're coming up, of course, with, with new things to get money from you. Toll fungus or all this crap that, you know, all these medications or whatever, put an excise profit tax on, on that. Problem solved. We would have medical care the way the rest of the world has medical care. So I didn't want to get on this subject and I forget what did I want to do? Oh, I wanted to, uh, where did that folder go? Oops. Come on, there was a folder. What did it move over? What did I call the folder? New folder, that's it. God, I hope these are not uh, pornography. Oh, okay. There's Rusty before Rusty moved. Rusty is now with with Russell and, Ru and doing well, they say. You know, I'm really, I miss her, but I'm glad she's gone because she was underneath. It was just 
going in and out the front, got were going in out the front door was a struggle to keep her from getting out. Um, she was underneath my feet all the time. I had to, I couldn't, um, uh, I couldn't watch, let's see. I couldn't move my chair without I'd have to make sure before I moved my chair. I couldn't leave, it got where I couldn't leave a glass sitting. And even if I, you know, if I brought some food in, I had my glass and then, whoops, I forgot my knife and fork. I couldn't, I'd have to take my glass with me because she would jump up and maybe knock it. She only knocked it over once, but, and all the time she was here, but she was just so much, too much work for me. So she's happy where she is. I'm still, I got cats that I have to feed on the, because Hillary, they know this is where to come for food. So every morning and every night I have to feed the cats. That's not too bad. But with Rusty in here, it was just a constant, constantly jumping up on things and knocking things over and a pen or something, you know how the cats are. You have a pen or something, you like to knock it on the floor, and I've got arthritis where it hurts whenever I have to bend over. So, a um, little bit chilly in uh, Fort Worth. Uh, okay, let's see. Oops, that's the... Uh, I guess it didn't scan. Okay, there we go. This is dark sky. It's 45 degrees. Let's see if this shows up. Yes, it's going to show up. Oh, you see my address. Oh, no. You see my address. The zip code is 76116. If you, uh, it's 45 degrees, low of 38, and the high was 59, and... Tomorrow it's going to be, see, oh, today's Saturday. Tomorrow the low is going to be 33 and the high of 67. Monday it's going to be 40, low of 40 and a high of 75. Since you've got my address, uh, if you have extra large t-shirt that says something on it you want to get on YouTube or whatever, please no Trump shirts. Um, your church, your school, your football team, extra large size. Uh, I'll wear it if it's, I'll wear it and if, if it's your football team or your school, your church or whatever, I'll try to find, or you can send it to me, you know, the link. New, by the way, no used shirts. Same with the hat. Uh, you know, if you have a hat that you want to advertise your company or you know, not the clan. Come on, you know, let's be, you know. Um, I'll look up, I'll, I'll try to wear it, and I will um, look up on the internet and put a link underneath where they can uh, click to find out information about whatever the company or the uh, church is or the school or whatever it is. Um, Uh, trying to think what other, anyway, extra large, I'll wear it, I'll put the link, now if it's something that I like, uh, I'll wear it from time to time. By the way, I have a bunch of shirts like this, and a bunch of them are red, by the way, and I think blue, so if you see me. I, I noticed a video, and I, made, I think I made like three or four videos in a row, and it looked like I had the same shirt on all the time, but I have, these are, uh, what's the name of the company, long, t they, because of, uh, 
Well, I like long t-shirts. Uh, so if you want to send it to me, I'll wear it. And if it's uh, years ago, a guy sent me a from Canada or a sweater, great sweater, and I still have it. And uh, but if you want to send me something, if it's a shirt I happen to like, you know, if I, if I happen to like, uh, it may be on a number of videos. So, shirt, hat, what else could I? I'll try to make as best I can, but if you want to send me the links, you know, if it's uh, something and say, here are the links to it, you know, and if it's a, hey, a neat, t-shirt or something and you're selling them uh, send me the link and tell me what the price is or something and I will put a link underneath here to the t-shirt and the uh, so I did a something like that years ago and uh, I didn't put my address though out. I actually there's a, there's companies that forward to you, so the mail goes to some place uh, some place else, not even the city you're in, and then they forward the mail to you. And I did a few promotions on the hey, you know, send me a shirt, a hat, or whatever, and I'll do such and such. And nobody ever sent anything, so I canceled the service. So. Uh, guess I better bring this to. A to a halt. Thank you very much. Much longer, I'm sorry, much longer than I intended for it to be. And Mobabi screen capture I'm using. And I'm going to, and this has been 37 minutes. My God. And the file size is 2.3 gigabytes. Oh, by the way, so uh, take me a lot longer to upload now. Well, wait a minute, does it? Because it's still about the same upload speed. Well, anyway, I'm sure we're glad when I can uh, get a new router and get things running again at full speed. Thank you very much for watching.